We bring in former acting U.S. Attorney General Matt Whitaker. Matt, as always, we appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we heard from Garrett in terms of the Wisconsin Department of Justice investigation. Where does the DOJ and or FBI come in on something like this? Well, I'm sure that both are already supporting the Wisconsin Bureau of Investigation in, in what they're doing. Uh, you know, I think it's very dangerous for politicians to characterize what happened or what didn't happen based on, you know, the video that we've all seen. Obviously, um, you know, th th there was a, a, a very volatile situation, and we all have to wait till yeah. we hear all of the facts and circumstances. But, you know, I am, uh, you know, I was, I was at the White House Thursday night, and I, I saw, you know, what this looks like up close and personal with some of these violent protests. And so, you know, it is very concerning, but I think, you know, what's stoking the flames is oftentimes these uh, left leftist politicians uh, well, that are, you know, kind of yeah, saying Yeah, there's the rhetoric and the rush to judgment and these sort of, all these kind of right. intersect into a pretty combustible situation. This happened in Kenosha. Um, there was a group of what they're calling outside protesters brought in, if you want to call them that, in terms of what they had in the car. Uh, police got some intelligence and they went ahead and arrested them. That's Garrett's live shot, not the video. There's the video of police intercepting this minivan. Evidently, there was also a bread truck and some other things that were brought in. These guys had uh, gas masks, among other things. It, uh, would not necessarily be needed by, shall we say, peaceful protesters. Didn't sound like they were all going to, uh, uh, you know, a pinochle party or something. Uh, the question is this. Right. Since these are people are now crossing state lines, clearly, and this is being organized using the Internet, where can the FBI come in to start investigating RICO charges, uh, right. domestic terrorism charges, advocating violence charges against the people who are, are funding this? Leland, that's a really good question, and I think uh, the FBI, I'm certain, is already looking into this um, network of uh, protesters that appear to be moving from city to city, inciting violence and destruction, chaos, and yeah. and looting. And and so I think that there is, uh, we've seen in Portland uh, where individuals are being sought by the FBI, and so I fully expect that in this case where these, uh, you know, what was clearly not peaceful protesting um, individuals that were moving to Kenosha uh, with gas masks, uh, fireworks, other things that we're seeing in major cities right now. I think you would expect that the FBI is already investigating. We, we've got the FBI wanted posters from the people in, in Portland. Uh, and th look, this all began you know, in Minneapolis with George Floyd. Then it went, th there was protests and riots in Atlanta. We've seen Portland for almost 90 days now. We had what happened that you talked about outside the White House. We had what happened outside the White House uh, in March or in May, rather, that I saw up close and personal. What's taken the FBI so long? This is the FBI going up against some, uh, some anarchists with fireworks and Twitter. Uh, and really, it's the end of August, and they haven't been able to uh, really arrest anybody and put an end to this? And find out where yeah, the funding's well, coming the, from? The, this, this is one of the challenges when you investigate these types of groups, is obviously they use sophisticated means, whether that's encrypted technology or whether just being loosely affiliated. And so, you know, trying to uh, investigate those types of networks, uh, you know, really challenges the investigators. But I, I can tell you, based on what I know, that they, that they are most likely already investigating this and that they have a pretty good sense of what's going on. And, and I think, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see to see how big this network of these well, violent protesters uh, exists. All this takes a lot of money. You've got the organizers and then you've got the funders. Uh, does, the, does the investigation and possible charges reach that far? Absolutely. But, you know, to get, um, you know, gas masks and fireworks and all the things that were intercepted on its way to Kenosha, uh, you know, it's, it, we're talking thousands of dollars. This is, you know, and, and, and at the same time, uh, we need to understand that this is what's causing these violent images that we're seeing play out, whether it's in Portland or Kenosha or Washington, D.C. or other places. And at the same time, you know, we need to encourage, uh, you know, people to speak uh, their political positions. And that's what we've seen over the last two weeks from the, the, the two parties that are running for president. Uh, what, we, what we can't encourage and we must stop are the looting and the vandalism and the, the right. violent acts the, against law enforcement who are, are risking their, their lives every day to try to keep our cities peaceful and protect innocent yeah. citizens. One might imagine that uh, those arrested on federal charges won't be released without bail as those arrested uh, in Portland and other cities so often are. Matt Whitaker uh, taking some time on a Saturday afternoon for share his expertise from his time at the DOJ. Thank you, sir.
Thank you, Leland.